stuff. So this is stuff that I do with my varsity, um, but it's also all the stuff that I have my JV coaches do with my JV as well. So um, I, I don't like my kids to take bad turns and warm up poorly, so if we warm up well, then I know we'll have the D. So the same way where you like tune a piano or tune a guitar, I feel the same way that this is why we do our complex. So if you warm up crappy, you'll have crappy enough. up. It's pretty easy. Um, so we really use this to really hone in and start. Uh, the first thing that we always do is our uh, is our beam hold. So those 10 second hold, forward and sideward. So we do this every day to start where they just come up on the beam right away. We just get nice and tight, nice and tall, well away. They'll do 10 seconds with their eyes open. And then they'll do another 10 seconds with their eyes closed. You'd be surprised how hard it is for them to be able to balance and figure it out when they don't have uh, when they don't have a uh, visual point of reference. And then we do almost everything facing forwards and outwards. I'll say sideways to them and sideways out, uh, just to get them used to being in that position over and over. So we'll, we'll start that way every single day as, as we get on the beat. So that's just kind of your, your zen moment for the day. Get in there, be quiet, get tall, get tight, and hold that there. Um, at initially, when you're first starting on beam, I'd like to say maybe the first week or so, just, just get no talking during the complex, just focus on what you're doing, don't have side conversations, talk about that stuff later, but just focus on what you're doing to set the tone. Um, we'll go through some beam walks on the front of that side. So, so we'll go through really basic things and kind of move up first. Just little tips that we do. Everybody does beam walks, and you have to do them. Let's do it. We're going to walk in the kitchen about the having a so I like to have to interlock their fingers, keep them up above them in that way. Um, my, my goal is to keep them nice and focused, and usually loose on beam, then hold at the end. And then so that they can keep them tight, up, stretched out, and again, then don't turn them at the end, hold again. Um, so that they go there, just keep them tight, keep them upright, keep them straight over the beam so they get that feeling if it's possible. Usually I'll have them go, I'll have them wait there, wait till they're all there, they're all elevated, and pivot with their arms up there, it makes it more unlikely that they'll drop their arms and be up there. If you want tight pivot turns, do it one more time. If you want tight pivot turns, then practice them that way. You know, make sure that you have that attention to detail. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know on these, but it's just how much attention you have to them every single day. And pivot. See, because her hands, if she had her hands clasped, that arm would not have dropped. So most girls doing that. And then let's walk their arms, not holding them, but still up. And then walk across. And I would always say, this is more advanced. Usually when we have girls walking across the beach with their arms up, that's a more advanced skill we do. You have to actually keep tension on your arms so if you don't come out, you want to do that as you go. That keeps you walking in there. Okay. Um, do that. Obviously you can go forward, back or sideways, but I would keep their hands interlocked there. I mean, I really said, like, you know, that really cool dance we can do there. Then pull up me tight, don't be saggy, just nice and tall, and really pull out there. Um, uh, we're gonna uh, our beam hop. So we'll do fingers in a lock again. Let's go beam hops down. So same idea here. Just keep the nice connection over the top. We'd like to see nice springy feet, so pushing off their toes, going there, so they're not quite going there. She has a hurt ankle, so she's gonna bother that one. Uh, play turn. Go again. I see nice and long bodies, nice and tight shapes, just punching through. Um, let's go put her on the top. Yeah, so you see in the back there with Anna, her a little more springy off her toes and tight, pivot. Let's do alternating forward. I like doing alternating forward because sometimes your feet actually do switch when you go, go through the air there. They're challenging, so you have to really work towards it. If you're not holding your hands, then you're really going to start dropping your arms. Uh, let's go see the fourth, let's pivot turn and forward alternating again. So, you, know, you want to be quick and sharp off your toes and push it through there. So, you think of things where they're trying to go switch lead, split jump, switch lead for three quarter. Uh, relax for a second. The more time you take on these, the better the other skills are. So, if you see that they're struggling on this, but then later on you're asking them to do a switch lead, split three quarter, you're like, oh, they keep falling on that. Well, they can't do this yet. Why are we asking them to do such a harder skill later? So. Uh, let's go alternating backwards. So this one's really challenging. Only six or seven people a year don't survive this. So, <laughs> so same thing. You see how like, they, they want to bend their knees. They don't want to quite push off their toes. They're a little skittish when they're trying to do those. Uh, but it's more challenging. But the really good ones can actually do it pretty well. Uh, let's go to the middle of the beam. So we can do alternating in one spot. So same thing. Arms pulled up. 
and your last, and then just go do maybe 20 alternating. So before we do the ones across, we try to do these to get them used to getting their feet to switch quickly. It also gets them their feet off the beam nice and fast. You can work on making their legs lock out. It's not as scary. Uh, let's do 10 more, but not interlocking fingers. The hands are up. Let me see, like they're, they're working hard to keep their arms up. They want to impress you. Yeah. I don't as much. A lot of people will say to look at the end of the beam. What are you? Where do you? Where do you? Stairs at a spot. Where do you look? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About 45. Yeah. I never did beam. I'm not as knowledgeable as they are. Yeah. Some people have. So on this V jump, I don't have one. And a couple of the jumps later, I have a little bit more. But I leave that a little bit to their preference for them. So yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah, and if any of you guys have questions, stop me at any time. Uh, Dean Hop, Alchemy Play, so no, I really like just going there. That's really good complex. If you have JV, JV kids, this should probably be the first 10 minutes of your JV practice every single day. You know, if you can nail this down, I mean, all they do is jump in the routine. They might throw a cartwheel or a handstand, and it's just jump. So take the time to do this, and they'll be a lot better. All right, uh, so we do four facing jump. So this is probably the spot I spend the most time almost every day with my work kids. Uh, with straight jumps, I'm really picky about how, how I want them done. Let's just do five straight jumps, six. So I'm looking for their arms to come all the way up. All right, so I would say we all inherit athletes. They come to us with whatever technique their former coach had there, so we have to kind of work with that. So my preference would be when they do their jump, that would be a jump straight up. Um, come here, and they'll just come straight down to here. I want to lessen variables so that they're not like, well, I go here, I saw a couple of them kind of go up here and they circle around and then come back. They go here and they do this nice little stylish thing. I prefer just straight up, straight down, especially if you're an absolute, absolute beginner JV kid. If it's a little bit of a experience, you have to go up, come down, be robotic, and just do that. You know, the quickest, the quickest direct against one place is a straight line. Let's go straight line, not straight line down. Right? We don't need style points on JV. You just try not to fall off the beam seven times. Yeah. So, uh, let's try three more with arms just a little bit more direct this way here. And then you see they're pretty good about it. they've worked with me for a while that when they land you can actually see if they land and they really tense up and land. We really work that a lot where we'll just try to go straight jump and hold for two seconds and go. We try to tell them that they want to press the top of their thigh to the bottom of the thigh, so they're pressing those in really, really hard as they go there. So land up, go, and actually press. Like you should be flexing as you land. If you want a tight landing, that's what you have to do. So uh, let's do three more. Let's see. Same thing where they're just kind of going there, landing. So, I mean, you can just see the difference of like, they really want to land there. It's not just like, oh, I'll jump and just, I'll kind of arrive somewhere. Um, just be really specific with the direction of your arms and then how tight you want to be when you get there. Um, arms as well, and you can't just be kind of all the way up. We get the helicopter problem later, where as they jump up, we start doing twisting jumps with their head out. So this is where you need to be really particular about them being up, so that when they do turn later, they'll be nice. And to to this guy here. So that's why if we fix it here, then it won't be a problem. Uh, let's see, Atlantic shape. Alright, um, and in the end, do your arms have to be down? No, that's what the great TJ Johnson at UIC in my Gymnastics 101 class actually taught me. She said, here, here, this is the safest way to land so that you're not late. So if you want to land out here, so we have more areas that you can wiggle. You can land out here. There are different shapes you can do. Whatever you pick, make sure they do it every single time. So I tell you, you're gonna do a switch lead, but you were taught to land here, that's fine, but I want it there every time, not some of the time. Because I think of it kind of a math problem of, if you're gonna analyze it, well, I did my switch lead, and this time before I take off my arms are here. The next time before I take off my arms are here. The next time they're kind of down here. I can't fix the problem if you're gonna keep changing what was going on with it. So if it's one less variable, like, okay, no, her arms were here, then I, then we can correct it from there. So you choose where you want them to be. Um, some people do the jump and they just stand up and they're really tight. That's great. But just make sure it's the same thing all the time. Um, also, if you have a really talented kid and they put him in the same spot and you're like, oh, I don't love them here, 
but they're a great beam kit, well, don't change it. So you don't have to force them. A, a beginner just about to come where I go. Uh, there, let's see. Let's do, we'll do the wall. You're standing by a wall, but I'm probably going to play. So, I think this comes up a little bit later, but just back against the wall before here. So this is my preferred landing shape for most of them. Uh, I like to do that for a nice little kind of stick here, this way you can see So I call this the wall when they do it on bees. When I want them, I want their shoulder over their hip and over their ankle. So that should be the ideal landing position when, on the next identical we can see right over there. That's when they have to be on uh, off the wall. And now do, a, do like a landing position on the bottom of the So there, and they can back your knees and then the off the wall. This is what you get when you fall off the beach. They're trying to keep their knee over their ankle. And if your knee's over your ankle, well then your bottom's on that side. And then they're gonna compensate for it by pulling their shoulders really far here. So they all look like they're going to the bathroom off the side of the beach. So go. Um, so to fix it, put your knees over the beach, so it's forward. Once you put your knees over, then your hip is over your ankle. So I'm always watching on the side there to see, are they landing and are they getting so like this guy's going to trick your face this way here. So you just push your knees forward. So if you're standing on the knee, you will see from there, you can take up. And you push forward, you can get forward, and you not, and you just walk back. So, just think about when you were on the wall, you can just get your bottom through the wall, and then you can just slide down the wall. You slide down the wall through that, and then you'll be in my arms. So, and if you want to throw it in the wall, you can just push your back off the wall, or you can push your bottom through the wall. So, the two should be pretty good. Alright, do straight jumps facing upwards. Let's go arms up and landing side. So, my preference on these would be arms come straight up. Uh, let's turn around to face forward. You can go arms straight up and then arms will go straight down. Go arms up and then there and land. Let's just do a two joint couple. I like to do this little thing here. She thinks she has style. Uh, ears are a little bit wide. Maybe a little bit Oh, there. That's a little better there. But we're just looking for them to go straight up. And the stop. And that's where we're looking for. Are they going to be on the wall? And you have to do these incessantly as much as you can. If you wanted to do any kind of three quarter jump, they have to be able to do this really well. All right, let's do, let's do a top jump this time. Would you like five top jumps? So same thing here. Once they get really good at those, you can, you can make it a little more advanced. Do top jumps here. Make sure that their knees are getting high enough. Uh, I think only one of these actually does it for the team. You can watch your ankles being together. You can watch for the height of their knees being high, high enough. Um, these girls do these all the time. You go to your gym, and if your girls have to do these, some these, they're going to freak out. They're like, do you want me to stand sideways on the beam and jump that way? These are really, really tough. They're making it look a lot easier than this. But you can keep going there. So, then same thing, let's do some split jumps. And same thing there. You see there, there, now that they're getting to be harder, now they want to drop their chest, now their body's trying to stick out. Then we go back and say, well, you've got to stay on your wall, you've got to keep your chest up more. Alright, let's stick the saddle jump. Oh, there's that shoulder kind of coming off the wall there. So just look for the correct and what it would be. Keep doing these in the routine now so those look a little easier for her. And just keep watching this go there and just make sure she pushes her knees forward. Um, all right, let's go to some straight three quarters. Straight three quarters, all the same principle. So everything builds on the last one. So we're not really changing anything. I'd want the arm to come straight up and then come around that landing stage. So like, hers are really nice. Go there, watch your chest dropping. That would just be on all the up. Turn, turn, turn here, and then you look at the side. So my preferred landing shape is your left arm or right arm, whichever way you go. So I'm in. Come here, you look down that arm, you go there. That arm is in terms of like where you're looking. So they like to either look down that arm or kind of peek down to the beam there. Fully if I really want it to be here, watch out for this arm not being here, but being up here. So they come around, land there. And it goes there. That's just going to pull their shoulder and then they come off. So if you have the air anyway, have them move it forward and go there. And then keep them this here. Keep you nice and balanced. But I think you're pretty nice. Right. 
Um, and then you do those over and over. Like it's just a matter of doing them. Um, let's see. Let's do cup three quarters and split three quarters. Let's do those. Um, as once you once you get past the straight jumps, we feel like they're good enough there. So I would have them go. Everyone would learn straight jump, straight quarter, straight three quarters. Oh, straight quarters. Holy moly! Let me back up one next step. Um, let's do some straight quarters. So before we got to the straight three quarters, we would have to do the straight quarter, and this really would take a while to get them to do that. But they have to just do pull up and then peek at the side. Up, peek at the side. So this is where you really establish the foundation of getting to that three quarter. Do that for a while, go through, then get that way. Uh, let's do like split quarters, tuck, tuck quarters, whatever you guys do for your three quarter jump. So if you would have them go, do like a tuck down, pull and go. Let's jump, pull and go to get them to go there. We try to make it as fully a jump, open the shape, and then turn. Okay, do a slip jump, go out there and turn. Um, and then do that, and just watch for the tight shape on it. Let's see, where are we at? Jump track, stand, jump, crazy quarter. Show the shape this way. Uh, when you're doing the three quarter jumps, so the straight jumps are a little more clear. For the hot three quarter, split three quarter, wolf, all those. I prefer that they show the shape at the halfway point. So if you're going to do a split three quarter, seven three quarter, if you're starting here, you would jump, turn. Once you get here, that's where you would show your split. So you show your split here, and then as your legs come together, that's where you go in pivot. So the reason we're doing all the split quarters, where they're going here, they're going split, and then quarter here, is because we're going to go here, half turn. Now it's just like, oh, I know how to do a split quarter. So you know how to do that part there. So I'll just combine those two spots. All right, so the that jump. All right, we did the jump sideways. Before you start teaching any of the twisting, the three quarter jumps, make sure that they're doing it facing outwards. So you're like, all right, they split their straight three quarters, great. I don't want to tuck three quarter. Make sure they start doing lots of tuck jumps facing outwards. Make sure they do tuck quarters. Get comfortable with that. Then add them. Then add that tighter last spot. At, at some point, they'll be asking you to like. Can I just do the whole three quarter now? I think, I think I'm good to go. And your goal always as a coach is to get them asking you, can I take the next step now? As opposed to you forcing them. Um, where are we at? Crossbow, and The wall, straight the quarter, tuck the quarter, more advanced. Oh, straight balls. They didn't want me to do these. Uh, we're gonna try to do straight balls. They'll, they'll probably survive. Pull it, keep that foot down, press. So, we, you get to the point where you can do these, where same landing shapes. If they're landing forward here, you can land here or here. You notice how much they have to try to pull their arms up and come around. They go there. Like they're, they're pretty gutsy to do. I said, have your kids go, go back, have your kids try it on the low beam. Don't have them try it on the high beam right away, but give them a shot to, to do this. But I would like, I'd like to have my athletes train something a little bit harder than what they compete. So if you're competing in split three quarter, why not try some split balls? Maybe it's only down low, maybe it's with the mat stacked up. But it makes it so easier when you have something where you're like, oh, I only do a three quarter in my routine. I'm not making you a full. Yes. Try and wait for a while, we can do that. Um, those are good there. You might be able to face outwards as well. This, is, this one's not their favorite. And see how we start breaking down there? Um, besides the arm, we start getting a breakdown. Uh, so the most common thing we do is just lifting the leg. So I ask them if they have to go to the bathroom. That's what my dog does when he does it. So when you land, it's just a matter of pressing your thighs down there. I'm like, are you keeping your legs tight? Your legs cool. I don't know, I can't really feel them. Well, that's usually the issue. If you don't feel them pressed together, then they're not pressed together. So, look at that. All right, um, the trees, I think. I think that's where we're at. I'm near there. Oh yeah, um, tree. So I stole this one from Peyton Manning. Um, before football games with his receiver, he would do this little tree, basically the wide receiver tree. His receiver would run out, he'd run out and do a little button hug. And then he'd go and run to the slant and do this, do this, do this. like eight different passes. He would run out, throw it to him, catch it, come back. But he had to catch all eight of them perfectly. If he missed any of them, he's got to do it over again. He's like, nope, I know I'm warmed up when I can throw it and keep catching it. Eight times, different routes, different routes, different routes, different routes go. Now I know I'm really ready to go. So you can put it in any configuration that you want, but I'm basically asking you to do these four or five jumps in a row 
with no movement. I mean, I want perfection on every single one, no bobbles. If you miss it, it doesn't count. So just if you want to do a beam routine with no bobbles in the whole routine, then you have to have situations where you actually do that outside of the whole routine. Uh, what did I put on here for our trees? Uh, well, what do you guys you, you know your usual tree? There? No? All right, we'll do straight jump, straight quarter, straight jump sideways. Uh, whatever your twisting jump is, twist quarter, and your twist jump sideways. So, straight, straight quarter, straight. And then the same thing, but with your whatever your twist jump is. So then like straddle, straddle quarter, straddle. Yeah, all right. So their goal would be to, to get all six, so once they bobble, they have to start over. So they have to make all six, all six variations, kind of what we do in the warm-up, and then make them all in a row before it counts. So you like Anna went through, she went straight, straight quarter, straight jump sideways, and go through. And then usually I'll give them a number, I'm like, all right, before we move on, you need to make five trees. So ready, go. So like, tight, 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 ah, bobble. All right, try again. Tight, 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 ah, I keep messing up on that one. I'm like, all right. If you mess on it twice, then you have to go back and do five more of that one, then come back and attack that one uh, as, again. Um, that's a nice one that they do. And then, let's see, what do you have? Uh, implementation, let's see. Start, you just start small. Like, let them feel success. Don't, just because they're doing well at a jump, we all get really good. Like, oh, they're doing so great. Let's put it on the high beam. Whenever you think they're ready to put it in the high beam, wait two or three days later. Like, just, just wait. They're, it's easy to scare them once and then you lose all of those weeks of work that you had opposed to just give them a couple more days give them a couple more more weeks to work on it and then then you'll have forever and then be intentional and in having it for next year i'll have a lot of girls that'll compete switch sleep straight jump quarter they're like a straight jump quarter what's that for well maybe a month of the season later and now it's switch sleep split jump quarter and we just leave that maybe that becomes the whole freshman and sophomore year but then by junior year, you're like, well, we ended that split three quarter. You start combining those pieces, and then you've got a nice switch lane for three quarter. You got four tenths of bonus. But figure out what jumps you think are really good for your program that work really well, um, and just stick to those. You know, you'll see almost every flip or West girl do a switch lane, straight jump quarter, split jump quarter, split three quarter. Um, it's just that we we know how to teach it. We know what we want, and we're looking at that for the long term, not just for right now. Um, all right. All right, I think that's all I have. Questions from any of you? Try to keep us on time here. Yeah. Uh, girls who twist themselves off in the beginning, what do you recommend, like, as far as correcting them? Uh, I mean, they're just coming off doing this. So I'd say if they're position starting, they're probably doing this. So just like, most jumps don't need that much of an arm swing. You know, I, I don't like my kids to drop their chest at all. So I'm going to say, you probably probably kind of go down here. So it would just be in the group, staying tight there. Like you just look at her and she goes straight, straight. Back up, it, back it up one still that way. So that's the three quarters to it. This guy here, but like she's just down to the start. So it's just a matter of like, nope, go back there. I think that force is afraid of like, watch, I'm not going to make it around. So I need to start cranking my, my foot that way. So I go back to some halves as well, you know, whatever. Or go back to a quarter less than that. Other questions? Yeah. How do you teach a lot of them? Instead of, some of the girls are landing, like, I mean, it's got to hurt the feet. I'm just like, what are they doing? Like, they're just the land softer. What do you guys think? Toes first. Toes first? Yeah, toes first. Toes first there, absorb it, and then come back down. So, I mean, if you think those are, you can do back flips on there. Yeah, I, mean, I, like, I, I, I don't wow. understand. I think they're savages. <laughs> when they go to a meet and it's like a hardwood floor, I'm like, oh yeah, back top. I'm like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> They're like, no, it's cool. So, they're awesome, powerful, young ladies. So, and so those of you that did that, that's really cool. I would never. So, I'm much softer than they are. Any other questions? All right, if you guys see me around, you need anything else, let me know. Thank you, right. girls. Yes. Thank you.